Welcome. Welcome to another chronicle in healing, another chapter. Here we have in front of us the Usha Research Institute. The Usha Research Institute is located on the north coast of Honduras, which is a country in Central America. We chose this area because we have thermal waters here. Waters that are highly curative. We have also the enjoyment of that backdrop that you see there, which are the mountains that uh, ranges from Guatemala all the way to Nicaragua. It is called, the group of mountains is called in the name of God. In nombre de Dios. So we chose this area to bring you this new chapter. This new chapter, as we chose to call it, and it is because it seems as if though many of the things that uh, would be discussed and talked about and explained to you uh, are things that we were not prepared. We were not prepared for because the school did not prepare us to understand that which is natural from that which is unnatural but don't feel that you are ignorant or less than what happened is that the schools did not prepare us but that does not mean that we are not capable of digesting a piece of information once that information is presented in the proper way so therefore we're going to begin to journey into this healing thing this healing journey that has been approached by so many different ways and by so many people since time immemorial. Today, we're going to try to decipher the undecipherable for you. That we could journey on a better footing, understanding what is health, what is healing, and how does the human body interrelate with these things we call plants. We want to understand, because it seems as if though, much of what has been said to us and shown to us has not been exactly right. They have not helped in the areas that we would like to be helped. So, we're gonna take our time and we're gonna walk through this thing, of course. You're gonna see things that you have not seen before, because as I look up there, menu of the American herbal position. Many of the herbs that, um, that we use here in Usha are not mentioned in any of those books. And many of the herbs that are mentioned in those books are hybrid, meaning that they are artificial. And this is the reason why we fall short of the goal. The goal is receding faster than we could run. So please, let us take our time and walk into this thing. We're going to talk about the things that we need to hear. And we're going to explain the things that were not explained. So, just take our time. So, as we carefully enter this most tedious journey, not a difficult one, just tedious. But we all are capable of understanding the contents of this particular uh, program or position. Sure we are. We have a brain. We could think well. Only we, the individual, or you, the individual, could determine really what is what it is that you feel, what it is you see. No one see from behind those eyes but you. So we know that this subject fits within this cosmic order and that we, being a product of cosmogony or life itself, sure we'll be able to understand the things about life when they are presented. So let us go first into the history of medicine. According to the history of medicine, it began in Egypt, 
with Imhotep I. Then it came down to Mr. Hippocrates, and it filtered down to Mr. Claudio Galen. So with Hippocrates in the year of 365 BC, to 1729, Claudio Galen, or the Italian. These three men, Imhotep, Hippocrates and Claudio Galeno had something in common. They all used the same substance. They all followed the same platform. They took the same position. Because during that period of time, that time in history, naturally, they were not <clears throat> in existence at that time, the chemicals that we are presented with today. They were only plants. But the history shows that they cured every disease known to man. So if this is true, then what happened between that time and now that things seem to be so difficult? Instead of us being useful in eliminating those that are present, New ones are cropping up every day, telling us that, again, the goal line is receding faster than we could run. Could we afford to continue on the path of the past? Why should we take a chance when the past has not served us well? Are we aware of the percentage of elasticity that the body could really admit or even afford stretching. How far could we stretch the human body? By stretching we mean stressing the human body to cause it to be in the state of disease. No, we don't know that. We don't know how much we have damaged ourselves because we have not been educated as to what we should have been doing, what, you, what we should be eating. We have not been educated in that area. So therefore, it becomes very difficult now. But even though difficult, as I said, everything seemed to be easy in deciphering and analyzing once we put into motion that part of us that the philosophers try to deny, the part they call common sense. Common sense tells us that if Hippocrates, Imhotep, and Claudio Galeno, not necessarily in that order, but the three men use herbs and that they were successful in reversing disease, what happened now? Not only have we failed as far as being effective in helping others to relieve themselves of disease, we have compounded and added to it using the herbs that we are using. What do I mean? It seems to be a contradiction. Because if Mr. Imhotep I, Claudio Galeno and Hippocrates use herbs, and herbalists today are using herbs, why aren't they as successful as Claudio Galeno and the rest? That is the common sense, part of it. If they cure, we should. Why aren't we? Well, we were removed from the rhythm of life we were removed from the path that helps us understand those things that are natural from those things that are unnatural. Because if those three doctors used these herbs 2,000 years ago and were successful, we in modern times should be even more successful than they were. Because we always attribute time 
and development, science to knowledge. But the fact of the matter is, we are falling short. We are falling short because the herbs that Imhotep, Hippocrates, and Galeno use are not the herbs that are being considered today as far as healing is concerned. What is the difference? There is a big difference. Remember what we said on the onset that we were not prepared for the journey of healing as we thought we were. We were not prepared because today we find that the herbalists are using comfrey, they are using chamomile, they are using golden seal, peppermint, aloe vera, and many, 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 many more that are all hybrids. They all are artificial. That is the difference. How could I, Sibi, expect for my brothers and my sisters who practice the art of healing using herbs where the molecular structure is incomplete because they are artificial to understand that when the very school that was attended support that position oh it becomes difficult because now our brothers and sisters not only in Africa, the United States, the Caribbean, also in Central America are using hybrid plants. What happened to the uses of the natural herbs? Something must have gone wrong. Something must have taken place to divert us away from this path. Well, something did happen. The healer was educated. The healer cannot be educated but from one source, Mother Nature, Pachamama, as she call in certain, certain levels and certain cultures. Pachamama could only be responsible for educating us in the art of healing, no other entity or philosophy, because all the philosophies have failed. Like for instance, the philosophy of using comfrey to straighten your bones only adds starch and acid to our system and compound that particular problem. The other is that I could drink wheatgrass juice, carrot juice, beets juice, and receive from that nutrition. That is impossible. Why? Because they're all artificial. Wheatgrass juice contain sugar and starch. Two of the greatest enemies of the human body. But our brothers and our sisters in New York definitely recommend wheatgrass juice with pride. What do you mean? This is a chlorophyll. I agree with the position of chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is one of the most effective and quickest way to heal the human body. But the chlorophyll would have to come from a natural base and wheat is not a natural product of life. So therefore, the end product of wheat would necessarily be an acid one. And that is the subject, acidity versus alkalinity. Acidity has but one purpose. Acidity enters the human body to destroy cells, to cause cell erosion. Alkalinity, on the contrary, alkalinity comes to support life and to maintain electricity. So, a hybrid plant opposed to a natural plant, and we would use two. We would use the Kalawala, which comes from this part of the world. It's a natural plant, it's a spore plant. The molecular structure is complete, deeming it 
electrical. Not so for comfrey, golden seal and the rest. They are hybrid, meaning that they were made in a laboratory. Being made in a laboratory, naturally, it has to fall short. Because to titrate two things in a laboratory, you need a chemical. In other words, if you have to bring two plants together that ordinary would not have joined each other's true chemical affinity, forced together is what makes things hybrid. You have to use a chemical to bind them. If man could make an artificial plant to equal in production to equal in value as that which is natural, then man says that he is God. Impossible. The human body is a natural one. The cells are electrical. The human body shows the ability to move, to produce motion, and there is nothing on the planet that produces motion that is non-electrical. There must be necessarily the presence of electricity. A hybrid plant is non-electrical. Why? Because a man made it. If man could make an electric plant, then he's saying he's God. He could make something to complement the human body. That is impossible. We don't even want to go there. So we see now that the reason why we have failed to compliment simply because we were not prepared for the journey. As for myself, I didn't prepare myself for the journey. I was prepared. And why do I say that? Because I had listened and read many, many, many books from Ivan Kerkikov, the Russian, Alma Hutchins, the Canadian, to Mr. Christopher, the American, Jetro Claus, the American, and many, many, Jeronimo Rodriguez from Brazil. He wrote a book, Las Plantas Curan, Plant Cure. I have read many books, Spanish and English. And out of those books, healing is absent. So now, it was necessary for the Usha Research Institute to take the position of common sense. That if Hippocrates cured, Galen cured, then we should cure. In our research, we found that there it were. Our brothers and sisters were not aware that natural plants are electrical. They do not live through the process of photosynthesis. Theirs is photovoltaic, which deems it electrical. Why should it be electrical? It should be electrical. If the human body is electrical, then the nourishment should also be electrical. But we find today that our educators, our religious leaders, our leaders and followers indulges in the consumption of acid substance, then seeking this thing we call peace. No. Peace could only be attained when one is married to the cosmic procession. And you show that you have divorced yourself from it when you drink carrot juice, when you eat carrot cake, when you eat beans. All of the beans that are made were made in England by Menlo. He was a Jesuit priest. And about the carrot, well, Nova showed us that they were made in Holland. And they were made by joining the Queen Anne lace, which is known as the yarrow, and the wild yam to make the carrot. Here we find our leaders and healers recommending to us that we eat carrot cake and drink carrot juice, eat bean pies. Could you imagine? 
show we could imagine. Remember what we said. We have been divorced from that which is natural and placed in that which is unnatural. That makes it extremely difficult. So as the Osho Research Institute presents its position, we are well aware that the limitation that exists among our people is so vast that we have to be careful in selecting speeches of various kinds, presentations of, on the other hand, of all kinds of presentation. We have to show examples. Examples that I find to be unnecessary, probably for me, because I suppose that I was given the privilege to at least listen. If I had not listened, I would not be able to offer that which we offer. I had to listen. And in listening, I am talking about not only an individual mouth, but Mother Nature. Mother Nature talks the loudest. I had to listen. And in listening, we saw all of the above. So the Usha research decided to put compounds together that would definitely hit the core of this thing we call disease. We just didn't want to make products that we read in other books and give that to you. Making recommendation using peppermint. I, we know at the, at the Usha research that when someone uses peppermint, it is only because this they had not done the research themselves. They are relying on the research of others. That is the danger. We're going to give only one example and then we're going to go into this thing that the Usha research has to offer. In the year of 1983, while in Washington, D.C., at 2010 Kendall Street, Northeast, there was a beautiful organization known as the Warehouse with beautiful people all striving to reach that level of attainment, the level most high in reference to healing and nutrition. We want to be happy and they were generally happy. And I was involved in them later on. They were there long before I got there. They were the people that invited me to come to the United States to begin lecturing and talking. Mr. Adisa Akil, Adio Kuumba, Hakika, and many others who represented the warehouse, the community warehouse. In that community warehouse, there were things that I learned that they were totally unaware, but they were beautiful. I could not share them because what I saw was different from what they were seeing. And what happened? One day, a gentleman came with a very bad heart problem. So I needed to buy bugleweed to address this problem. I sent Adisa to buy the bugleweed. When Adisa returned, Adisa opened his bag and I looked at it and I said, Adisa, where is the bugleweed? He said, this is a bugleweed. I said, no, it's not. So I took a piece of it, I said, this is a blue vervain, and I tasted it, you know. To tell the difference. If you learn about herbs via a book, you're in trouble. You're vulnerable. Because you don't know if the research done by those who wrote the book that you read was correct. How would you know? You don't know. So here it was, this lady said that this was bugleweed. I just said, take me back to the herb store. This is at St. John Herb Store in Maryland, in Silver Spring. I go back to the herb store and I said, pardon me, but I think that there were a little mistake made. That could be rectified. And what is it? I said, uh, I wanted bugleweed and they sent me this. But this is bugleweed. My boss has been selling herbs for 25 years, and she knows herbs, and she put this herb in this bag. I said, ma'am, 
it doesn't matter if your boss sold herbs for 125 years, this is not pure weed. Please do me a favor. Go inside and see if there's another bag by, set by it that says blue vervain. She goes inside, she said, yes. I say, what happened? They mislabeled the bag. And because we are unaware of what herbs really taste like, look like, and should be like, because we go to a book, we don't know what an herb look like or should look like. We don't. So lady, please give me the one that says blue vervain. I taste it and it was bitter. And the lady said, one is bitter and one is sweet. I said, yes, the bugleweed is bitter. She gave it to me. She realized that armchair research doesn't help too well. Armchair research helps but very few people. Field research is necessary in reference to healing. It is absolutely necessary that all of the herbalists in America take to the fields, just like I was led to it. And they will see how easy it is to cure AIDS, diabetes, lupus, herpes, cancer, impotence, and others. They will see that. But as for the moment, no, it is virtually impossible for them to see that because they are operating on the platform of others without having the privilege or another entity to investigate. The, uh, the one that they have accepted. So at the Usha research, first, we want to know what was disease? What is disease? Because it seemed to be misinterpreted. Everyone is talking about departmentalizing or individualizing disease. When you have diabetes, it's different from having leukemia. When you have sickle cell anemia, most sin is not like leukemia. They are different. When they are not, they've never been different. They're coming from the same source. The mucous membrane of our biological structure has been compromised, meaning that the mucous membrane has been broken. And wherever that broke has taken place, that break has taken place, would determine the disease that you would manifest. Like, for instance, like we always say, if the mucous membrane has been compromised in the nasal passage, it is what? Sinusitis. In the bronchial tubes, bronchitis. On the lungs, pneumonia. In the pancreas, diabetes. On the brain, schizophrenia, paranoia, or Parkinson's disease, insomnia. Depending where the mucus is located. So we took the position. And we maintained that position. That there is only one disease manifesting in a thousand different ways the compromising of the mucous membrane so that led ma'a and i to think about not only addressing to one part of the body but to address the total body because the body is all interconnected and interrelated we can't treat one side without the other so we said, just go for it. An intracellular cleansing. Self-explanatory. Cleaning every cell that makes up every organ and system that totals the biological you. Meaning cleaning all of you. Not only your colon, like many have decided to do, to concentrate on the colon. No, we concentrate on the whole human body. Cleansing the human body is only but one part of the whole journey. The other is bringing back the energy that was lost by the presence of disease. That energy is supported by minerals, live minerals, phosphate of iron, phosphate of calcium, and phosphate of everything that we're going to use will have to be phosphate. Why? Because they, and they alone, 
are electrical. So as we recommend the intracellular cleansing, we know that the person in question, patient or client, has suffered the loss of energy by the presence of such disease. So, apart from part one, which is the cleansing, now we have to revitalize the system because it has been weakened. We can't select comfrey and golden seal, aloe vera, peppermint, and genesia. No. We have to go to Kalawala. We have to go to Contribo. We have to go to Cordoncillo Negro. And we have to go to the one that I favor most of all, the Pavana. Now we are talking about electric herbs for an electric body. After we selected these plants, these electrical plants, we made these compounds. In administering these plants, these compounds, we see that immediately in less than 24 hours our patient is saying, I am already feeling the effect of this comp these medicines or this food. Why? Because they are electrical. So, there is an intracellular cleansing and the revitalizing of the same. So, for those of us to be electrified, we have made and put together the Maya Electra. The Maya Electra is guarantees that upon taking the first tablespoon and the first day, you will feel the response because you will feel the presence and enjoy the response of the presence of iron phosphate. Why we talk about iron? Because iron is by far the most important of the mineral king in the mineral kingdom. That mineral is by far the most important. Why? Because it is electrical like the rest, but it has magnet. It is the only magnetic one in the whole ramification of life. Iron. Why iron is so important? Because upon taking iron, we take all of the minerals proportionally balanced. So the Maya Electra was put together using 14 of the highest contents of iron in the bowels of Mother Nature, ensuring that you would be electrified. The other, we made, is the bolo, the fucus, the CC4. These are for therapy. These addresses when there is a condition that is of a uh, great need, a pathology presenting itself, we, re we recommend that you take the bolo, the fucus, the CC4, and others that makes up this intracellular package. The Maya Electra is not to address any particular disease, although many has claimed that it removed tumors, it stopped this sickle cell, it raised the energy immediately, which it was intended to do. It raises the level of energy instantaneously, the Maya Electra. But because it is iron, and iron has a tendency to fight inflammation, it is by far the most effective agent in combating inflammation. And that is the seed of the seeds. But we made it to address only energy, not to cure any disease. We also put together the Eva salve, 
which goes immediately into the pores and revitalize the cells of the pores and begin to remove that particular erosion. We also put together the T1. The T1, which is the one that is selling more than anything else as far as our product is concerned, the T1 addresses the prostate gland because it is laden with zinc, organic zinc, phosphate of zinc, not zinc oxide. Be very careful when entering a herb store or a health store. Read the label because as we find in the allopathic chemicals that are very damaging to the system, we find that in the herb stores, others may not be as damaging, but they will clog the system with chalk. When you ingest oxide of zinc, this is exactly what you're doing. But when you ingest phosphate of zinc, you're not. You're dealing, you're now ingesting something that has pre-digested for you by the plants. They are phosphate. The T1 addresses the prostate gland, cleansing and ensuring that one would regain that sexual level that one thinks that's so necessary. As for the female, we find the H1, which is a nutrition that really feeds the reproductive organ and stabilizes the nervous system addresses this hot and cold flashes. So, we have last, but not least, the power pack. The power pack goes a little further than the Maya. The power pack seemed to get to areas that the Maya doesn't. The power pack as it is described, tells you that you will be packed with power. And that also is composed not only of the 14 herbs, but we have 23 herbs in the power pack. Because it has elements in it that is different from the Maya, the Maya Electra. We have had, we added herbs so to the Simekotwa, we also add the Cordoncio Negro, like from here, from Honduras. And these herbs have a tendency to go straight to the brain, electrifying the system, adding to it. The Maya Electra being ironed and concentrated in the blood. But the other one, the power pack addresses not only the blood, but the brain, the electrical system of the body. So we have compounds that are for therapy and compounds to maintain energy. Using that platform that we mentioned, the understanding that if the substance is non-electrical, why should I take it? Why should I permit such a thing to enter my system? Because it would not assimilate. Assimilate, yes, assimilate. Assimilation is necessary. Assimilation only means that your body have accepted it. And the body, like the earth, only accept those things that are electrical and natural. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, the earth, if you drop a piece of paper that came from a tree, it would biodegrade. But if you drop a piece of plastic on the surface of Mother Nature, no, she rejects it because it did not come from her laboratory, it came from someone else's. So you see, we have examples all around us. So just keep in mind that the human body, to begin with, is electrical, and that it needs an electric substance to electrify it. That's common sense. You cannot electrify an electric body with dead substance. Now, that doesn't equate. Herarusha 
The 24 years that we have put into this thing, both my aunt and I, not only did it help us in reversing AIDS, diabetes, blindness and the rest, but it helped us to understand the emotional part of this healing, the mental part as many accept for it to be mental, naturally. When acid enters the human body, it disrupts not only one system, it disrupts all systems. So as we have this answer, or as we present this answer, we are totally unaware that the condition that precipitated the presence of the ulcer has now damaged the brain. But unaware of that, we find that many problem arises that has not been adequately treated. So we are proud to present to you and the rest of the world from Honduras, the African Biomineral Balance. Meaning, to electrify the system. We learn from our ancestors, we learn from our mothers and fathers from the continent that when it drips in the house, you don't put a bucket to catch the drip, you close the hole in the roof. And it is the dripping in the house that was treated, but it kept on dripping. But if you close the hole in the roof, then you have stopped the drip and pacing of the bucket. So in understanding what is the African biomineral balance, it is closing the hole in the roof. Cleansing away the toxin that has accumulated over the period of years. Cleansing it out. At the same time, the biomineral balance offers electric food. Today, we're going to take our time and show you three items that is These three items that we will present to you today that plays a very important role in our method of healing and the properties used. One is the thermal waters that we have to offer, which are very curative because it contains a high concentration of Phosphorus, sulfur, iron, oblium, gold, and every other mineral that you could possibly think of in Mother Nature, all is in that water, making it highly curative. The other is the blue vervain. The blue vervain has always been one of my favorite plants in addressing prostatitis and the central nerve system. We will show you the other one, the sauco. The sauco and the berries that we make some of our compounds out of. So we're gonna go and take a little walk to show the thermal waters. These are the thermal waters. These waters come out of the ground at the temperature of 210 degrees Fahrenheit. 
sometime above boiling point, sometime a little below, which, you know, 212 is the boiling point. But this water has known to cure instantly nerve condition, nerve problem. We have carposis sarcoma. In the case of AIDS, people come here with these vicious sores, as they are called, carposis sarcoma. And in four days, those sores disappear. This is crystal clear. Make no mistake that in the United States, there are parts that has, there are health centers that offers what they call hot springs. Now we don't offer any hot springs here. Hot springs only means that water is flowing over a hot bed, but it does not contain the minerals that you find in a thermal spring that is the result of volcanic activity. Well, here in Central America, we have over 50 volcanoes, and we sit in the middle of them. So naturally, we're going to receive the benefit of such presence of the volcanoes. So here we have the result, the thermal waters that the Usha Research Institute has to offer. Here is a plant in front of us that is known in Central America by the Spanish-speaking Indians. They call him Sauco. Sauco is a plant that in the berries we find that the mineral of iron is found. Iron phosphate is found in these berries. And these berries are responsible for us reversing a lot of diseases that sits in the blood. It contains iron phosphate. This plant, the sauco, when it sends its roots into the ground, it converts that oxide mineral into a liquid digestible substance known, the process is known as iron trophorosis or the conversion from a solid to a liquid. And here Mother Nature has converted iron, which is solid, into a berry for you to enjoy. And over here, we find now that the flower, unlike the berries that contain iron phosphate, the flower now is a different chemistry. Here we have potassium phosphate. When the children here in Central America has fever, rest assured that the mother would come here and ask me to give them some of the flour of the sauco to remove the fever because it means that inflammation is sitting someplace in the body and this is extremely effective because of its high content of iron and potassium phosphate, the sauco. Yes, here we have out of the bowels of Mother Nature, another gift for us. One of the most beautiful plants in the world. I mean, it has these beautiful flowers, purple flowers and green leaves. If I was an artist, I would have never integrated both. But look at what Mother Nature is doing. This plant is responsible for many, many, many things. First, just go to the central nerve system and the prostate gland. This plant is effective not only in the prostate gland of men, but in the reproductive organs of women. This plant, to me, is one of the most valuable plants. But it has a little secret, if there's such a thing, which I don't like to use the word, but it's something that should be known, that the blue vervain, as it is called, and rightfully so, the blue vervain. The blue vervain is a plant that you have to be careful in processing fresh every day. The roots could last a long time, about six months, and this is one of the things that we find in the United States, that because of our brothers and sisters do not get the fresh herbs, it, that it prevents them from reaching that goal that they are seeking. And I re really do believe that our brothers and sisters in the United States are really trying to do their best and trying to see how they could help. Because it is impossible for me to think that a black man that belongs to the black race, a member of the black race then, would deliberately take upon himself the position to destroy us by recommending things that does not work. No. That is not their position. We know that. We know they mean well. 
But because they do not have the privilege of using plants like this one, fresh, so it will become effective. So this plant contains, again, iron, magnesium, phosphorus, but one of the things that I like of it, of it, it contains zinc and also potassium phosphate. So it appears to the central nerve system because of the potassium phosphate, which fights inflammation and treats the nervous system, and iron fluorine, which again addresses the blood. The blue vervain, this is among many of the plants that we use in various compounds, but this is one that I like very very much because it makes me feel so good and it's so pretty this is the blue vervain yes brothers and sisters this is the position of usha and these are some of the plants that the usha research institute gladly present to you and this is why we have been useful as we are in reversing disease because mother nature has offered us plants that are electrical <laughs> yes, we are proud to present this part of our operation, designed by Dr. Savy with the help of Ms. Chandra Washington. This was designed approximately uh, 12 years ago. Chandra and I sit in Washington, D.C. and thought about this, and here it is. And it gives me pride to say that a sister was the one that really did the better part of it. Uh, not only in designing it, but then to maintain it and to make it what, what it is, another sister by the name of Ma'a, assisted by Judy, assisted by Betsy, Elizabeth Volant, and assisted by Annette Thomas, and many, many others, Marjorie, all of them contributed to the presence of this particular place because they all work at Usha. Uh, to make it uh, an institute that could express itself on a level that uh, the public would appreciate. So we are proud to show this part of our operation, the little village of Usha, designed on an African base. Here the beautiful mountain top again appears uh, at the Usha Research, which is part of the of the mountain range known as the Nombre de Dios. And in the back and here in front of us we see now these little beautiful round buildings, which are the thermal baths. These baths is where you go and take your, your bath every day individually in your tub. And it was designed like an African little village, you know, which is which is part of our little scheme of thinking. You know, the black man, he always prefer round and square. And we have six beautiful little bathtubs that definitely have done for you and for others uh, that which one expects. These are the interior, one of the interior of the thermal bath. If you notice it, they're made on a half moon structure. You know, we split the circle in half and you get a half moon. And uh, it is here where people come and experience relaxation instantaneously. Stress leaves once you enter this water because the presence of the minerals plus the pH being a pH of 8.8 .8, which is more of the highest attainable pH on the hydrogen ion concentration scale. pH means hydrogen ion concentration meaning that your body would be energized immediately with oxygen and hydrogen ionizing it giving you energy and relaxing at the same time. See, this one here.